Welcome to Adventures with a Very Small Lathe. For this episode I need another custom fixture to hold the work, so I cut a new length of mild steel to use as a drawbar through the rotary table. The central spindle mounting has caused me some problems in episodes 2 and 3. The part has a large diameter for such a small lathe and is heavy causing vibration. The register for mounting on the lathe has already been machined and the rest of the diameters need to be concentric with the register or the whole faceplate will run out. This means I can't machine the remaining geometry to final size on a self-centering chuck, but my four-jaw chuck has had serious problems with chatter and vibration, which made it unworkable. I'm going to work around this by delaying bringing the diameters to their final dimension until I can mount the part on the lathe directly using its own register without any chuck required. This is currently not possible as the part currently has no mounting screw holes and without them there is no way to ensure the part is properly locked to the lathe spindle. I'm going to begin by drilling the screw holes blind into the back face of the register, then do the rough turning in the lathe's stock three-jaw chuck until the blind ends of the screw holes are exposed. It's easier to drill the holes before I do the turning while the outer end of the part is large and can stand firmly under the drill. I'll then be able to drill the counterbore, properly mount the part directly on the lathe spindle and then turn the diameters to dimension with the minimum possible runout. The drawbar from the previous episode won't work because it's too short for this part and because the part currently has a 4mm hole drilled through the centre so it needs to be narrower at least one end. I'm sticking to 6mm for the rest of the diameter so I can reuse the plastic taper bushing I made in episode 5. It's also the only narrow steel rod I have to hand. I needed to reduce the diameter to 4mm for a length just over the length of the spindle part so the end needs to be centre drilled to go in a live centre. The live centre is necessary because the rod is way too flexible to be turned with this length protruding from the chuck.
The very top end needs to be slightly narrower so I can cut an M4 thread with a cheap die. Despite reducing the diameter so much that there's very little depth to the thread, cutting it is still quite a battle. It's worth spending money on decent taps and dies, but the die I ordered for this job didn't arrive in time. As it's just a disposable fixture, I went ahead with the inferior tool. It's not pretty, but the nut hole's just fine. The other end just needs to be faced and threaded. Trim the diameter a little and chamfered the end to make the thread easier to start. Fortunately I have a decent M6 die which can easily cut the thread under power. The tailstock die holder is one I adapted for the tailstock on this lathe. I needed to adapt it because the tailstock doesn't have a standard Morse taper. I'll upload a video later describing how I adapted it. Four mounting holes are arranged in a circle with a diameter of 34mm, 6mm less than the diameter of the lathe spindle hub. I'm using the rotary table so I can drill the holes exactly 90 degrees apart so I need to align the part centrally on the table. The mounting screws are M4 and I'm planning 5mm holes so the tolerance of the locations doesn't need to be finer than a tenth of a millimetre. The indicating took embarrassingly long and was very dull, so I've skipped most of it. I first used the edge finder to find the centre along the x-axis from the outside and aligned the spindle with that centre. 
I then used it to find the inside diameter of the register. The edge finder has a diameter of 6mm, which is the same as the difference between the register diameter and the diameter of the hole centres, so this gives me exactly the location I need without any further adjustment. To save myself the hassle of noting down or marking the correct angles, I aligned the table to zero before I started, and used the cardinal angles for the holes. Drilling the holes to full depth and diameter took quite a bit longer, so I've accelerated the footage here. I drilled them as close as possible to the required depth with just a little over, so I don't have to deal with interrupted cuts when I'm turning away the bulk of the material and uncovering the blind ends of the holes. Now the holes are drilled, I need to turn away enough material to uncover the blind ends and enough clearance to drill the counterbore. M4 cap screws will need an 8mm counterbore, so the central shaft will need to be less than 26mm in diameter. The holes will then allow me to bolt the part directly onto the lathe spindle to do the rest of the turning with the best possible accuracy. In a previous video I promised to do this turning off camera, so I won't bore you with too much detailed footage. While there were no serious problems with chatter, the cutting pressure limited me to a maximum depth of 0.1mm before the lathe stalled, and the chips were very long and stringy. The chip breaker on turning inserts isn't designed to be effective for such shallow cuts on a small lathe. I stopped just short of the blind holes, so avoided interrupted cuts for most of the work. 
I was concerned that I'd chip the inserts if I broke through unexpectedly. I was removing about 25mm of diameter so needed around 125 passes. The constant threat of chips tangling around the chuck and the caution required to avoid stalling the lathe made this a long, tedious and annoying job. Once I got the diameter down to 25mm I cleaned up the back face and started to uncover the blind holes. Almost immediately I started to hear the thrum of the cup being interrupted, but after a few passes there were no obvious visible holes. The holes turned out to be covered by a thin layer which was being pushed back into the hole by the cutter. Effectively a very large burr with no edge. It was easy to push them through with an Allen key. After uncovering all four holes I moved the part back to the mill to drill the counter bores. I lost most of the early drilling footage but you can see me bringing the counterbores to their final depth here, except one. I overdrilled one counterbore by 3mm because I forgot to allow for a change in the column height. There is still enough material for the screw to hold securely but the screw cap will be obviously too deep. The spindle should now be ready to mount directly on the lathe. Let's give it a go. To make sure that the rest of my plan is going to work, I took the opportunity to remove the burrs from the corners that I missed earlier.
with the spindle now much closer to its final form and the main features of the faceplate itself already complete, the whole project looks much closer to its end goal. In the next episode I'll be bringing the spindle shaft to its final diameter and cutting the threads the two parts need to fit together. Please like and subscribe if you're interested in following this project and feel free to let me know in the comments if you have any thoughts or suggestions. Thank you.